what a great day to sew something wonderful. I'm Kia with Kia B, and today we are going to be taking a look at a little pattern from Thimble Blossoms Mini by Camille Ross Kelly. This little quilt is called Spools, and when I picked it up from my local quilting store for just a couple of dollars, I could not wait to get home and make a little miniature quilt for my craft room wall. Let me show you. This quilt ends up about 14 by 16, and so it's just the perfect size to admire for my sewing machine. You use one charm pack, and so it just accentuates the patterns from the line very, very nicely. So let's talk about the materials you'll need for this tutorial. Listed on the back, you'll need 14 charm squares for your spool centers. So we've chosen to use Sunny Days from Benertex. This is great because it's got florals, plaids, and so even some solid on solid. Next, you'll need a quarter of a yard of fabric for your spool ends. I've chosen a gray on gray polka dot. Then you'll need a third of a yard of background and border fabric. I've chosen a white on white polka dot because let's be honest, you can never have too many polka dots. Then you'll need one fat quarter for your backing. I chose a light pink because it's going to accentuate the flowers in the, in the charm pack very nicely. Then you'll need one fat quarter for your binding. Now I chose a really bright yellow because when it's on my wall and I'm looking at it, I wanna admire the bright colors. Lastly, you'll need a 16 by 18 cotton batting and we'll talk about a little bit later why you need a bigger backing than what your quilt's going to finish at. Let's take a closer look at this adorable little pattern. As we open it up, there are some tips and tricks which are great for beginners because it gives you some terminology and your seam allowances. Next we have our cutting list and then if we flip it open one more time, here's our block assembly, our quilt assembly, and our finishing which is your binding. It's so important to remember to read your instructions before starting your project. This will allow you to have a clear understanding of your layout of the quilt and stay a few stitches ahead. I've chosen 14 of my favorite prints from our Sunny Days Charm Pack. Something I'd like to point out, if you don't have a Charm Pack, don't worry, you just need 14 five inch squares and you can grab those from your fabric scraps or your yardage stash. I'll be using a Fiskars cutting mat, an Alpha rotary tool, and a Cute Cuts ruler from Lori Holt. I just love this little ruler, it's just so bright and fun. I'll subcut each of these charm squares into two pieces, three and a quarter by one and a half. And it's really important for you to label your fabric so that you stay organized. So as soon as we cut these, I'll label them fabric A. So let's cut this at three and a quarter and I just line it up on the side and line it up on the bottom. So we're at three and a quarter. We'll put that to the side. And we'll turn it and I'm going to get two pieces at one and a half. Line it up on the side and on the bottom. So there's one. And here is another on the bottom and on the side. Great. So don't get rid of all these extra pieces because these are going to be great for a scrappy project down the road. So we've got our two pieces here and we're gonna label those fabric A. I'm gonna continue to cut the charm packs and we'll be right back for our next cutting list. Okay, so we've got all of our charm squares cut. You should have 27 pieces total and we are going to label these fabric A and just kind of slide them to the side. Next, I'll cut my gray on gray polka dot for the spool ends. Now I have pre-pressed this to get rid of any pleats or folds in the fabric just from being in my stash. And we are going to cut these as the pattern calls for four and a quarter by one and a quarter pieces. And we're going to label these fabric B. All right, so we've cut it at four and a quarter. Now we want to cut it at one and a quarter sections and you need 18 of these. And I'm cutting two at a time since the fabric is folded in half. So what I'll do is I'll line it up here on the bottom with my little edge and I will line it up on the side and I'll just continue to keep cutting all the way down. All 
right, so now we've got all of our gray on gray polka dot cut, and we are going to label these fabric B and scoot those to the side. Lastly, let's rotary cut the white on white polka dot. Now this is gonna be used for our border and our background, but so I don't give away all of this pattern's goodness, I'll cut these and meet you back here as soon as I'm done. You'll need to follow your cutting instructions on the pattern for measurements and then label these C through G. For the spool centers, you'll need three fabric A pieces. So I've just chosen three that I like. We're gonna head on over to the sewing machine and we'll sew the top one to the middle and then the bottom will sew to this sewn unit. Make sure that you're using a scant quarter inch. This will allow for maximum size of a measurement of your mini quilt at the very end. All right, so like I mentioned, we do need to make sure and use a scant quarter inch, and that will just allow for maximum size of your quilt. So I'm gonna change my machine here. Her name is Opal. I'm gonna change her to a scant quarter inch, and I'm just gonna sew down each one of these sides here. Now I'm not gonna worry about pressing with a hot iron just yet. I'm just gonna open and remember this is my center and so I'll take my bottom piece here and I will sew my center. All right, now for the sake of flipping back and forth and back and forth to our ironing board, I'm just gonna open and finger press these seams. So I don't wanna pull on either direction of the fabric cause that will stretch it out and we don't want that. I'm just gonna gently open these seams and push here, just light pressure with my fingers. Flip it around and open this one as well. All right, all right, so now we've got our spool center. The next thing we'll do is take a fabric D piece and we'll sew to each side. We've just finger pressed those. I can start at the beginning and just make sure that my seams stay on either side. Again, using that scant quarter inch. I take a couple of stitches and then kind of straighten out my piecing again. You'll notice I'm not using pins. I'm a little more comfortable not using pins with smaller pieces. With bigger pieces, you'll definitely want to use them. And that way nothing slides under your sewing machine and gets off track. So let's head on over to the ironing board and I will show you how to press this spool center. All right, so here is what our unit should look like. Remember we finger pressed this open. So now I would like to take a hot iron and actually press this open. But let me tell you, there's a difference between ironing and pressing. Pressing is just applying heat straight down onto your seams, allowing not much movement within the fabric. Ironing is when you lay your iron, your hot iron down and you smooth over. And so it allows for stretching and just a different shape of the fabric. So I'm just gonna take my wedge and I'm going to just apply just a little heat to each of these seams. This way as well. And you'll notice I lift it up before I move it again. That allows for the fabric not to stretch. Now at the same time I'm pressing these, I'm also setting our seams here on each side and that way that makes that seam just a little bit stronger as we press it open. So now we'll flip it back over. We want to open these up just a tad.
notice I press my seams open. I do that because I do use a smaller stitch on my sewing machine and I feel like my quilting can take that. This next part can be a little bit tricky. We'll need our fabric B strips and our fabric C squares. So I'll just take two of these because we'll need two for each spool center. That means we'll need four squares for each spool center. Now what we'll need to do is we place our fabric C squares in opposite corners of our fabric B strips. Just like this. Let me do that on both of these. Now, this is called dog earing your corners. We're going to take and sew diagonally from one corner to the outside corner. Make sure that they're both outside corners or else you're gonna get a wonky kind of cut. So we'll sew from one outside corner to the next outside corner. We'll flip it around and we'll do both sides. A trick to doing this would be to draw the line from corner to corner. Because it's such a small one inch piece, I'm confident that I can visualize that corner to corner piecing. So I'm just gonna leave this here and I'm gonna start with my foot down, or I'm sorry, my needle down in the middle. I'm just gonna sew diagonally, making sure that I take smaller stitches and a little bit more slowly. Next step in this process is we need to cut a quarter inch away from the seam that we just sewed. Now you want to snip a quarter inch away from your block, not toward your block. Oh, you're just be cutting out all the work you just did. So for such a small block, I just eyeball about a quarter of an inch. I'm just going to snip that off of both ends. And the reasoning we're doing this is just so there's not much bulk as we open the seam. So now I'll head over to the iron and I'll press these seams open again. Now because this is on the diagonal, it has a lot more stretch to it, that's called the bias. And so I'll need to be extremely careful as I am pressing this open not to stretch this white. With our spool center here in the middle, let's take a look at our next step. Now we've got our spool end units. We've got two of those, one for each end of our spool center. Now, what we'll need to do is pay attention to the way you're putting your spool end on. I know this from mistake from my very first spools mini quilt. I sewed all my units with my spool ends going the wrong way and it just doesn't look like a spool of thread. So make sure that you follow your instructions in your piecing. So we'll sew our spool center to the top and then our bottom to this unit here, and that will make our spool block. Okay, did you get all of your blocks sewn? They sh are starting to really shape up nicely, and so next I wanna show you how to square up your blocks. And you'll wanna do this with any quilt that you're making, any quilt blocks. As soon as your blocks are assembled, you'll want to square them up. And so you'll see like I have a little bit of a jagged edge here. This isn't very straight. So what I like to do is just take, um, I'm using an OmniGrid uh, six by six squared ruler, 
And so I'm gonna pick a point that I know is straight on my block. And so I know that this piecing here is straight um, because we've already sewn that. So that's what I'm gonna choose to line up. And I'm just gonna line it up on my ruler and then you'll see it just takes a few hairs off the side. Barely cuts anything, but it's enough. All right, let's see. Then I'll just keep going. You'll notice I put my pinky on the outside of my ruler and that's so that there's not a lot of shifting on the mat. Um, if you don't have little grippy, sometimes people have grips in the corners of your ruler. If you don't have those, it is easy to slide. So I put my pinky on the outside if it's a short enough ruler and that way I don't slide it everywhere and be in danger of cutting my finger. Well, you should have nine complete blocks that are straightened. So now the next part that we're going to do is we're going to lay out our quilt top. This is without any sashing, without any borders. So you'll just want to piece these together. Let me move our project out of the way. You will just want to space these out. I know I have two geometric patterns here and I don't want them together. So I know I want to space that out a little bit. I want to make sure I don't have too many yellows next to each other um, or any of that. I think I kind of like the layout of this. Next thing we want to do is we want to um, go on with the instructions. So now that we have completed quilt block, then we're going to go to quilt assembly. So at this point, I think I've got my blocks laid out in a really nice pattern that I like. Next step is to sew our sashing to our blocks. So you're going to sew a sashing to the first block and the second and then continue down in your rows. After that, your units will be sewn together. We'll need our fabric F pieces to add the center sashing, which will go in between each row. Then you'll need to follow in your instructions on exactly how to add these outside borders, which will then complete the entire quilt top. After that, it's just sandwiching and then getting to the fun part of actually quilting your project. So I'll meet you back here as soon as we're all finished with that. something like this. We've got it all pieced together. We've got our sashing and our borders and it's just really coming along nicely. Now is a great opportunity for you to lay this out and to look and see if you have any uh, just little stray threads around your quilt and you'll just want to take a little pair of scissors and snip those off. So let's talk about imperfections in your piecing. Your quilt blocks don't always end up 100% straight. You'll see over here, my spool center kind of curves to the right a little bit. There's kind of a wavy line here. But my number one rule that I try to live by in quilting is to not point imperfections out to people. Be confident in your piecing, be confident in your quilting. So speaking of quilting, that's our very next step. So for this next process, you'll need batting and you'll need your backing. We are finally at my favorite part in this process, the quilting. I like to lay my piece out and just kind of look at it for a few minutes and see what I might like to do. As you can see in our finished, I chose to do a diagonal crisscross. I liked that so much in this one, I think we'll do that again. 
So the process for doing this, you'll need your top that's already pieced together and you'll notice our seams are opened nice and flat. You'll need a batting. I'm just using 100% cotton batting. That's my personal preference. And then you'll need your backing, which again, I chose this light pink because it does bring out the pink in these florals very, very nicely. So you'll want your batting and your backing to have about a two inch border all the way around. That allows for when you're quilting that your top may move a little bit or adjust and then we'll trim off the excess when we're all the way finished. We wanna start our quilting in the center and work our way out. If we work from one end to the other, we might have some stretching and movement. So I'm gonna start in the center and I'm gonna grab a ruler and I'm gonna mark our first line with a friction pin. So I've got my ruler here. I'm just gonna lay this down and I've got a friction pin. This is just uh, the Pilot friction pin what I love about it is that as soon as you apply some heat, the markings completely go away. So I absolutely love that. My first angle I'm going to draw is just from corner, inside corner, to inside corner of our actual spools. So I'm going to line my ruler up and give myself a starting point, And that way I know where my first stitch line is going to be. Before we can get to our quilting, we do need to baste this. And so what that means, I like to use a temporary 505. This is just a basting spray, it's an adhesive spray that I like to use. You'll want to use this in a very well ventilated area. It is very fumy and it gets absolutely everywhere. So I'm actually going to baste um, my backing first. And you spray it directly on the batting, never spray it on the fabric or it can leave a residue. I will push up and out and that way I know that there are absolutely no folds in our backing or our batting, that it's a nice and smooth process. press from the middle outside. Again, with this, because I'm pressing directly on the fabric, I don't want to push and then pull. I just want to press just like I did with my iron, so that way it's not distorting the fabric at all. In this process, you do want to make sure that all your seams are down, so if you kind of feel a little bulk, a little bulk then maybe lift up your quilt and make sure that your seams didn't get a little cattywomped. So now what I'll do, like I said, I'll put on my walking foot on my machine and we will just start stitching and then we'll use our walking foot as a guide. It ends up about a quarter of an inch, um, which will end up looking something like this.
how does your quilting look? I'm all the way finished with mine and I love it. You'll notice that my lines, they're not completely straight and my squares are not absolutely perfect and I'm okay with that. Remember I told you earlier not to point out your flaws to anyone else because all they're going to see is a beautifully finished handmade quilt that you've worked so very hard on. So I'm ready for our very last step, which is binding. I've trimmed away all the excess of our batting and backing and pushed it to the side. If you're unfamiliar with how to bind a quilt, you can look up in our YouTube tutorials on how to bind this very project. Thank you so much for joining us in this tutorial of Thimble Blossoms Mini Spools Quilt. This is a cute little project that I was happy to make with you. If you'd like to make more wonderful projects with us, click the subscribe button down below to get updates of when we post weekly tutorials. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.